Welcome back. I'm Alex Bell getting to the point and digging deeper into local issues. And it's no secret housing and rent prices are just skyrocketing in our area and across the nation. I mean, take a look. According to Realtor.com, the average home price in America hit a record $405,000 in March a more than 13% increase from March of 2021. And for renters, the rents have increased about 17% from this time last year. And demand for housing just continues to exceed that supply and material shortages and construction delays are slowing down all that production. So what about just printing new homes? Well, Mike Duffy's got all the info that you need to know because this is really a revolutionary technology, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. I mean, of course, most of us have heard of 3D printers, but some companies have made them large and complex enough to print houses. And I spoke to manufacturers of these houses across the country asking if 3D printing really could be that silver bullet, something to solve all of our issues. One of our most pressing issues here in California. Kristen Henry is the chief technology officer at SQ4D, a New York-based technology construction company that makes 3D printers that can build houses. A lot of people are starting to become familiar with small-scale plastic 3D printers. Concrete 3D printing is not significantly dissimilar than that. Obviously, instead of using plastic filament, we are using uh, this concrete material that we are extruding in layers that we then stack. And as we go up and stack the layers, the layer below has cured enough such that it is strong enough to support the weight. In concrete 3D printing, there is no formwork or molds or anything required. We are able to just stack the beads of concrete on top of each other. So unlike pouring where you have to construct the formwork and then let the concrete cure, we are just uh, stacking layers as we go with no manual forming required. If you're wondering what's required to build a 3D home. So all of our houses are made out of concrete. Uh, so we have uh, cement, water, and sand. Those are the only materials we're actually using to do the printing of the house. Or how long it takes to build a home. Project in Riverhead uh, that we just completed was 1,407 square feet. And that took us 80 print hours spread out over 18 days. Zachary Mannheimer is the founder and CEO of the Iowa-based company Alquist. They're based in Iowa City, building in Virginia, Oregon, and maybe coming to California. We are a 3D printing construction company, okay. uh, but our goal is to create community and economic development, and we're doing that by creating the housing. Uh, but the number one need in every single community is housing. You can't create uh, community or economic development if you don't have anywhere to live. They just built the first 3D owner-occupied home in the world with Habitat for Humanity. Now, they're looking to change the way houses are built. The construction industry has not adapted or changed in any major meaningful way in well over 100 years. We looked at a variety of ways to drop costs. We looked at modular housing, manufactured housing, uh, and both of those certainly work. But we think that 3D printing allows you to not only drop the cost of housing, but also customize the home in a much more innovative, unique way. Mannheimer says the cost savings are significant. So right now we know that 3D printing, uh, just in general, uh, will save between 10 and 15 percent versus a traditional stick built home. In a place like California, it's probably going to be significantly higher uh, just because of the average price that folks are paying for homes. The cost savings are not just up front, they're also on the way that you operate the home. We know that a concrete 3D printed home, when compared to a traditional stick built, uses roughly 50% less energy costs than a stick built home. So why aren't we seeing more 3D housing? We are averaging roughly 50 requests per hour for 3D homes right now, ever since Christmas. It's been crazy. Every state in the nation has reached out. There's over 12 uh, countries in the world that have reached out to us. So we can't keep up with this demand. There needs to be 50 more companies like us to really fill the gap that we see, especially in a place like California. But is 3D printing the solution for California's housing crisis? I brought that question to Tyler Pullen, a PhD student in urban planning at UC Berkeley's Turner Center for Housing Innovation. Interesting, intriguing, exciting uh, are the first things that come to mind. But he's not going all in just yet. The second thread that usually comes up with 3D printing is um, skepticism, generally. They're coming at it from the perspective of a pretty fundamentally different way of doing construction. Um, maybe there's plenty of cost savings and time savings to be seen, um, but I think my, my reflex is I haven't yet seen them. He admits housing is just so complex. And I don't think there is any one size fits all or silver bullet to the housing crisis. 
um, especially affordable housing. I think there's a lot of different ways we need to innovate and change, some of which can be on technology, some of which can be on business models, a lot of which has to be on policy and procedures and how the industry works. Well, Tyler also told me that he's not writing 3D printing off, but he doesn't think that it's also that silver bullet, that one single solution everybody's looking for. Well, yeah, and I think a lot of people are going to want these 3D printed homes regardless. I mean, 50 requests an hour, yeah, and they so got many. that house done in what? They said 18? 18 hours. Uh, eight. 18 days, 18 80 days, hours. 80 hours. I mean, that's that's just crazy. Now, is, are there any benefits here in California if people want 3D houses? Sure. Well, if you could bring the cost down, obviously, that would be something. But the other thing is we are always worried about wildfires. And essentially, you'd have a completely concrete home. So that would definitely diminish that. And, of course, getting something to that area is the other thing a lot of people worry about. Like, how could you get into an area that you could then build a fireproof house? Well, he said the idea would be to turn a truck into kind of a transformer that would just become the printer. Imagine how cool that would be. Oh my gosh, we are in the future, people. <laughs> we are here. <laughs> All right, thanks, Mike.